my name is Sue Donaldson and I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about imperfect hospitality. Uh, it's a little easier for me to talk about it because I'm not a perfectionist uh, and I've made so many mistakes and I've lived to tell about it. In fact, I'm going to tell you about several of my mistakes right now in the next couple minutes. Um, on the other hand, I do have a little bit of pride. I know I do because I get embarrassed if I've burnt the chicken again or I just made purple chicken just a few minutes ago because I used the wrong ingredient, but I'm going to try to fix that before company comes in two hours. I don't really want to have pride, and I know you don't either. And so I'm going to go ahead and talk about that and show you what I've done and that, you know, really no one has actually died at my table from my cooking, and so I think that should be an encouragement to you. I want to talk to you about it because I think people, oh no, there's the bread machine. <laughs> Do you want that in it? Anyway. I just started the bread because I forgot to buy bread, so I'm making it in the machine, and that's another imperfect part of hospitality, but it should be done by 6.30, I hope. If not, we'll have it for dessert and have bread pudding. Um, I think people don't open their homes because they're afraid of things not being perfect. I really think that's a big fear, and it's something we need to get over, and one way to get over it is just to keep doing it, and I know it's hard, so I'm just here to encourage you to go ahead and do it anyway and ask God for help. The point is is that God has the perfect part covered because He is the perfect God and we're not. And so it's okay that we have to rely on Him and ask Him for help at the last minute or a week, a week ahead of time, who knows. In fact, I want to say that there are actually benefits to making mistakes. And of course, I've learned this from experience. Early in our married life, uh, we invited the pastor and his wife for dinner and I did uh, try a new recipe which I don't always recommend but I thought oh, I know how to cook this should be easy and I did change it a little bit also another thing I don't recommend but I changed it and it was a stuffed meatloaf and I laid it all out and I put the mozzarella on it and the chopped ham and I rolled it up and everything seemed fine right no when I was serving it I noticed at the table that it was really pink in the middle and I thought well that's the ham and then I realized when it was on the pastor's plate that it was raw in the middle. So I was embarrassed and I started picking up everybody's plates quickly and saying, oh, I'm so sorry and thank the Lord we have a microwave and I was sticking it in the microwave and dear Doris Keller, our pastor's wife, started talking about when they were first married and he was the pastor and they invited people over for stewing chicken. <laughs> And she didn't know what stewing chicken was, and of course it was so tough they couldn't eat, and these guests had to take them out for lunch afterwards. And at the time I was thinking, I don't know what a stewing chicken is either, Doris, but just please keep talking because the food isn't ready yet. And so that was uh, a culinary fail, but they didn't care. You know, they were glad to be invited, I think, and the pastor did not use me as a bad sermon, sermon illustration the following Sunday. I did make him promise not to, but. Uh, the point is is that you can still make a friend with a culinary fail and that they're just glad to be over and you learn graciousness and humility and those are good things. Here's a benefit for making a mistake. Our imperfection helps make another person feel good about who they are. Everybody knows they're not perfect unless they're lying to themselves and so when when they see that you're not perfect they feel like maybe it's almost like an inward sigh of relief like oh good I don't have to be perfect either because Sue's not perfect or George is not perfect or whatever the situation is. I actually had a friend come into my home once and say, wow, now I feel better about my house. And it was kind of a joke. It was a little sad though that my house was that messy at the time, but um, I thought, well, I'm giving you a gift. I'm giving you a gift of being myself so that you can be yourself and you can in turn invite someone else over. And so next time that your roast is dry because you've overcooked it or your jello doesn't set, I mean who makes jello anymore, I'm not sure. Um, or next time the coffee is weak or your chicken is purple. But you can say, next time you have a fail, you can say, hey, this fail is my gift to you. Because now you can feel comfortable in your own shoes and please have me over for dinner next week, I'll come. Um, that is a result of imperfection and it's one of the best results. Usually people are just happy to be invited. You know, they don't really want you to be perfect. And you may make a new friend in the process.